Maybe we've all been too hard on Barry Bonds, myself included. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say something nice about Barry, something his teammates have ever done. I'd like to wish Barry Bonds a happy Father's Day. Now, I've never heard anybody say he was a bad father. Even his own website says that he's a devout family man. And I, for one, believe it. For example, on his website, you can purchase for a mere five grand a signed baseball glove. Now, he never wore it, but he did sign it. So you see, Barry's doing everything he can to provide for his family. He's taken time out of his busy workout schedule to sign a glove and make it available to you, the public, to purchase. That's great. It makes a great gift for Dad, too, on Father's Day. Now, if $5,000 is a little steep for your budget, Barry's offering some wristbands, too. Again, never worn for only 750 bucks. And don't you worry, every penny, I'm sure, is reported to the IRS because no godson of Willie Mays would think of cheating on his taxes. No. I'm also quite sure that Barry has explained to his kids the dangers of flaxseed oil and how if you're not really, really careful, somebody might sneak something under your tongue that in fact is not legal, like steroids, for example. I'm sure his kids believe that it's pretty normal for your head to grow a couple sizes when you hit your 30s and for the veins to start sticking out of your body. It happens. Sometimes a ball player can hit 73 home runs in one season at the age of 37 just by studying the pitchers better. Yeah, all this criticism really seems unfair to me. Like that taped message on the answering machine of his alleged mistress. That could be anybody. When you're the home run king, people imitate you. They prank people, pretending they're you. It happened to Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron all the time. People have just been so harsh with Barry. They call him Bearoid and uh, Big Head Barry and Cheater and Liar. That's not nice. You and I know Barry would never treat us with such disrespect or arrogance or rudeness. It's just not his way. He's Barry Bonds, doggone it. He's the all-time king of clout. Let's have some respect, after all. It's respect from the pitcher that got him 120 intentional walks back a couple years. I'm sure it had nothing to do with steroids. So, very happy Father's Day. Here's my adult mature take on the all-star voting in Major League Baseball. <laughs> it's stupid. I know, I know. The fans should vote, right? It's the fans' game. Okay, fine. But what makes somebody a baseball fan? Oh, you've got a ticket to a game. Maybe even your first game? Oh, that means you should know the difference between a put-out and a pitch-out. Please. Because somebody got you a ticket? You're qualified to say which player should be in the All-Star game? Well, punch those ballots there, pink hats, and make sure you vote for the player if he's cute. It's always safe to vote for the cute players. Hey, if cute wins votes, shouldn't Jessica Simpson win an Oscar for her fabulous acting job in Dukes of Hazard? I voted for Dan Ugla at second base in the National League for two reasons. One, because a vote for Ugla is a vote against cute. And two, because to me, I don't know, Chase Utley sounds like a financial investment group. Uh, Chase Utley, member of FDIC. The point is, most of the voters are not qualified to vote. I mean, we're not electing a president of the United States here. Maybe you've never even been to a game. Well, Major League Baseball thinks you should get up to 25 votes for the All-Star team. Just click, 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 click all night long, even if you're some computer geek who thinks Don Drysdale was the banker on the Beverly Hillbillies. Now you can even vote for the All-Stars at Walmart. I can see it now. You're waiting in line to buy a $3 shirt and tie, and some Roseanne-looking lady with six screaming kids who's there to buy two-for-one fly swatters and some slippers that glow in the dark leans over to you and says... Who you got for catcher in the National League? The ballots are so outdated, too. For example, Kevin Euclid's not on the ballot. Jason Giambi is. Here's my suggestion. We find the 5,000 most educated, dedicated, intelligent baseball fans in the world. People like Bob Costas or Eck or TC or, or Hazel, even Steve Buckley or, or me, for example. Those 5,000 people vote for the All-Star team. Then the players can lobby us when they have an All-Star bonus in their contracts. Give us, like, signed bats, cool stuff like that. Or kickbacks. That's it. Kickbacks. Money. Maybe Manny would give me his $4,000 grill for my vote. Come to think of it, does Manny even know there is an All-Star game? I don't know. But he sure is cute. And that is your Mikey moment. Speaking of cute. <laughs> my week is not complete without a Mikey moment. Don't go away. So
It's been a really long time since the combination of a soccer star and a prima donna has gotten so much attention. I'm thinking Mia Hamm and Nomar was probably the last time. This, this whole big thing over the arrival of David Beckham in Posh Spice is being called a British invasion. And hey, we know British invasions here in Boston. But this isn't like the Beatles in 64. This is one Spice Girl. It's Posh Spice. Now, maybe I'm old and stupid. But I don't know the names of the other Spice Girls. Cinnamon, clove, basil, I don't know, Sneezy, Doc, Dopey, whatever Spice. Whatever became of Gassy Spice? Did they kick her out of the group? Why doesn't Posh use her real name? It's Victoria. What's wrong with that? Or, or Vicky? It could be Vicar and the Kicker. Now that's catchy, I think you'll agree. Why don't I know anything about David Beckham? I, I didn't even see Bend It Like Beckham. Does he bend a truck in half or something? Or, what does he bend? Does he limbo in this film? Now, I think soccer's a great sport. I really do. And I fully support the New England Revolution. But since when does a pro athlete need some hot, famous, sexy woman to make his career? Joe DiMaggio in Maryland, whatever her last name was. Or Dave Justice and Halle Berry. I'm not buying this. Can you imagine how famous these guys would be with a Spice Girl? Like Dyson Spice, or Jim Rice and Spice, or maybe even Charlie Weiss and Hold the Spice. Only in the USA could this arrival be such a story with all the confetti, a big press conference. Remember, we care what Paris Hilton does. and She can't sing and she can't play soccer. Was she in Bend It Like Beckham? I don't remember. So now, if an over-the-hill former star athlete wants to be a $50 million a year guy here in America, he just needs to marry a singer from a girl group. Can you see Roger Clemens right now? Yeah, get me Belinda Carlisle on the phone. Seriously, though, I hope soccer really, really takes off in this country, and I hope David Beckham stops calling it football. But what I really, really want, what I really, really, really want is zig a zig. Ah. Oh, yes, and he sacks Michael Vick for the 10th time this game. Hello. You know, sometimes I wish I were Judge Judy. I say that here, but I really probably don't mean that, because if there's anything unlikelier than me going to eight years of law school, it's me having a sex change operation. What I mean is there's so much going on in the world of sports that has to do with the legal world. Swing and a drive. Left center field. Hit a ton. Out of here. Baroid is going to be your new home run king. He's got the IRS after him. He's got the grand jury convening to find out if he perjured himself. His ex-girlfriend is mad at him. And he's not exactly on Kurt Schilling's MySpace friends list. But still, Bud Selig is happy. Well, with the exception of his haircut. Why is he happy? Because he's not David Stern. And why is David Stern not happy? Well, he's got some smarmy little referee cheating and throwing points around, and Vegas is upset, and the NBA is in its biggest scandal ever. But still, David Stern is happier than Roger Goodell. Why? Well, Roger Goodell has to take charge of the killer of canines, the punter of puppies, the doggy destroyer, Michael Vick, who is on the verge of becoming the world's most unpopular athlete ever. Michael Vick is so unpopular right now. As a matter of fact, the VapoRub people are thinking of changing it to Victoria's VapoRub. Vic Damone is thinking of changing his name to Ed Damone. It's not pretty. Did you happen to hear who Michael Vick has for a lawyer? Billy Martin? I also want to apologize to my Falcon teammates for not being with them at the beginning of spring training. This is my dog, Timmy. Timmy I had for 12 years, and he died last year. He was my best friend. I used to have a catch with him every single day. I used to pull into McDonald's and buy him cheeseburgers. And he would never think of biting anybody, ever. The point here is, you don't train your dog to kill other dogs. If there's a doggy heaven, then Timmy is up there playing right now with all the puppies that Michael Vick and his scumbag friends killed. Allegedly. If there's a doggy hell, then I sure hope Michael Vick becomes the official groomer someday after we soak him in gravy train.
There are a lot of self-righteous commentators in this country who have been attacking Bill Belichick and the Patriots in the past couple weeks over this Cambergate thing, calling him a cheater and the like. You know what? They're jealous. That's all it is. Fans of losing teams like to attack the winning team and their coach for anything they can because they're jealous, especially the New Yorkers. Hey, New York, I got news for you. A-Rod is a cheater. That's right, he knocks the ball out of Arroyo's glove. He yells, I got it against the Twins. He's a cheater! One time in high school, I was taking a chemistry test, and I looked over to my left, and I just happened to notice that the girl who sat next to me who gets straight A's had circled the answer C, so I circled it on my paper. Doesn't mean I would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> Doesn't make me a cheater, right? But did you see what some jerk did in the post last week? The standings were doctored with an asterisk, indicating the Pats really weren't 2-0 because they were caught cheating. That is so lame. As if the videotape confiscated had anything to do with Eric the Weenie Mangini and his lousy Jets losing to Bill Belichick and the Patriots. That's ridiculous. Stealing signals is no more than intelligence gathering in a war zone. You mean to tell me that every other team in the NFL doesn't have some kind of surveillance on the other teams and their coaches? Are you kidding me? I don't care if it's binoculars or lip readers or disgruntled ex-employees. This information is being gathered. So, Mangini, if you really want to get around this, make your signals more tricky. Disguise them. Then nobody can steal them, whether it's on videotape or in person. So if you're watching, Mr. Turncoat Big Shot New York Jets coach, here's a not-so-tricky signal I'd like you to intercept. Eric Mangini is a big weenie. <laughs>
Worst of all, he comes directly from the Yankees. I don't like that. For half the money, you can keep Mike Lowell. He's the MVP of the regular season, MVP of the postseason. He's a gold glove third baseman. He's loved and revered by his teammates, unlike A-Rod, who's a $350 million prima donna package of, oh, look at me, I'm a superstar. I rest my case. Every year at Thanksgiving, I sit down and I make a list, a list of things I'm thankful for which kind of makes up for the list that's ongoing in my head of things I'm not thankful for, like cranberry sauce, which I hate, and traffic. Anybody in front of me, I hate you. It's not your fault, really. George Carlin once said, anybody that goes slower than me is an idiot, and anybody who goes faster than me is a maniac. I really truly believe that. So I make this list of things I'm thankful for, and it always seems so, I don't know, short and typical. I mean, we're all thankful for our families, right? Well, except maybe OJ's kids, or... I don't know, Brittany's kids or maybe Eric Baldwin's daughter or something. And, but we're all thankful for our families. And we're all thankful for our jobs. Except maybe if you're the guy that cleans out porta potties for a living. In any event, the list is pretty typical. But this year, I am so thankful for so many things that are so awesome. Let me give you an example. Ray Allen for the game. Got it at the buzzer. <laughs> the Celtics are 11 and 1. <laughs> and the only game they lost, they lost by two points. The Patriots are only the best team ever. Four touchdown catches from Walsh tonight. In the history of the entire world, when they play anybody else in the NFL, it's like Shaquille O'Neal having a fist fight with Sandy Duncan. It's just not fair. Can you believe it? And of course, we're all very thankful for the Boston Red Sox, the team, the management, the players. We're especially thankful for the World Championship and the World Championship MVP, Mike Lowell. Lowell hits one into left field. For re-signing at a discount. We appreciate that. We're thankful uh, for that. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm really thankful for HDTV, too. It's so great. It's so lifelike, so vivid, so it feels like you're right there. And for that reason, I'm also very grateful to Hazel May and Catherine Tappan.